Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today, and today we're going to be installing a bathroom fan. This one is going to be the Revent RVS80, because that's all I need for this very small bathroom. So, first thing you're going to want to do is open the box, like so. Today is a pajama day for me, so if you see me in my pajamas, don't be shocked, because it's pajama day. Look at that! Nice all white cover rather than having the uh, vents it just picks up from the surrounds which is a little perfect grab this out I'm guessing this is just the cover I'm just gonna double check though so if it is it is it's the cover the instructions some rats and screws sorry for the lighting in here this is uh, my renovation suite look at this so if you have drywall you would put this up on the ceiling, square it up against all your walls. So you'd measure from the wall to the edge and the wall to the edge. If I can describe that any better. Let's see. Oh, dumping this box. Let's just put this up here. Ta-da. Okay. So, let's pretend this is your ceiling and this is the edge of the wall. And you're like, well, I want this to be symmetrical. You can either measure to the center and line up your center point here and your center point here so that way you know this is absolutely center on um, it was this was the end of the wall and you know you're absolutely center to the room absolutely center here and then you can measure from another far wall and make sure this is center if that's a thing if you're trying to center it in the bathroom if you're not then that's the center method I would use just measure from here to here here to here and Again, we're not doing this on a wall. It's going on a ceiling. Have to be very strict about that. And the next other thing is, is if you can't see in the wall, there's two ways you can do this. You can either check here, but if you, it's a finished suite and you can't see it, you can always check the attic. Or if you have a stud finder, you could go through. Um, if you stud find, what I like to do is cut a small hole right here. We'll first trace this out, then cut a small hole in the center take a piece of uh, an old school hanger or a piece of haywire or anything that's kind of like that or a fish tape, bend it in half and turn it in a circle all the way around to make sure you're not going to hit anything like HVAC and whatnot. And then of course the other way of doing it is sliding a camera in there or cutting the hole a little bit bigger with a hole saw, looking inside and making sure so if you're a little bit and you have to off center it, you can. But other than that, now that we've got that figured out, I don't need this because I am working with unfinished ceiling. Ta-da! So let's go back down over here and go through the rest of what's in this box. There's that. And then that's it for this. I think so. Maybe a little more. This is the actual fan unit itself. Pretty solid looking unit. I got it because of how quiet it's supposed to be. When I looked it up, it said something like uh, 0 0.8 sawn, which is very, very quiet. Oh yeah, got that right there. Just checking to make sure. Oh, there's a bottom panel in this box. So, it'd be easier just to show you. Another mounting bracket. And another mounting bracket. Put this right here. Again, like I said, it's right on the box here too. 0 0.8 sewn. Should be super, super quiet. All right, let's see how we're gonna mount this. All right, let's show you how to install this. So, what you're gonna need is your little mounting brackets if you're doing it on studs. What I did is I measured between my framing gaps, which you probably can't see my hands, from side to side like I showed you. This is my center and this is my center. So, looking at this box, you'll see that you have this side piece on here. Depending which way you want it to go into the room more, you'll slide this one in to where it's going to go the closest and then this long one you slide it where you want to go along. 
So, for me, it's something like this. I didn't need that anyway. And then this can come in here. This will sit something like this. Except for right there. Now, if you have a drywall, depending on what kind of drywall you have, and also other stuff, if you're planning on installing 5 8 drywall, you'll see that there is a 5 8 tab on here. You would bend that out. If you're planning on doing um, half inch, you would bend out the half inch. For me, my plan is to do, if I can, 5 8 So, 5 8 5 8 5 8 and actually this side I don't need to do because this side isn't going against the stud but yeah if you have sheetrock or depending on what sheetrock you're going to do you bend that out this will help you set your heights so let's say we've set that now now we can slam that right here line this up in the center which is where's my center mark right there so it would sit somewhat like this I'm gonna, and then you drill in two screws here, then come up here, put this screw in, put this screw in, and then we have one more piece of metal which I just dropped, which is going to go on the other side. And I totally bent these tabs on the wrong way. Should have bent these. The other one, just like that. Yeah, just like that. So now that we got that, this will go here, this will go here. Suck that end up. Perfect. If you're looking at your box here, you'll notice you have this one, but if you're going right up against the stud, well, that's too long, right? So we need to cut one of these links out. So what you do is you can either try and do the bendy method or if you have a pair of tin snips we'll just try and cut this out see if that's long enough of course now I've messed the track up cut it into a V if you want that way if you're lucky come on Maybe a little bit more V action. Take a look here. What we're going to do next. Bring these up like so. And then after we do that, we just need to, of course, center it first. This has to be centered right about here. There we go. And then, we'll see if I have any magnets left in my screws. That's close enough. Except for it. When that happens, the tip. Need to replace my Phillips head tip at some point. I only have like three backups in the garage, but hey. Okay. And then from here we want to attach the ones up top. So bend it up as high as you can go. Well, not as high, but I want to be able to do this. And then we're going to go on this side. 
Okay. And now, if you want to, you can take your tape measure, measure from the bottom of this piece, so that adjust the metal, and I see here, I'm at like an eighth under an inch and a half. So that would bring me to right about there. Make a small line just so I can see. Right about there. Take the rest of the 5 8 tabs, bend them out. Now the reason why you're going to do this is that way when your drywaller comes, he will butt the drywall up. Now the average drywaller uses half inch. I'm doing 5 8 because I want a little bit of a separation barrier and that will also help quiet the sound from this because it's a little bit thicker. Again, up to you, talk to your drywaller make sure that you're doing half inch. If you're doing this into drywall itself right now, make sure that you um, flip the tab, put it on. If you're going right up to drywall though, you'd use this one. Just because then that would sit flat into the uh, drywall ceiling. But since we're doing prefab, we will do this. The other way you could do this is if you slid this into the hole by grabbing onto the fan assembly, you could flip these down. If you've got long enough screws in the drywall, um, you put the screw through the drywall and into this anchor right here and it'll tighten that, it'll tighten the screw from this end of the drywall in. Make sure you put a washer on it and then yeah, that's another way of doing it. I'll leave it up to you. Either way. For my purposes, 5 8 5 8 For yours, if you're not doing 5 8 half inch, flip the all the half inch tabs out. Now that we are at that area, we know where we're at. Um, drywaller has all those corners. When they put the drywall in, it's going to bring it up. Now the last part is, now that we have this all assembled, you have these machine screws, which they give you as well. And what these are for is for on the sides here. You'll see when you look. So, they actually sent me with the wrong screw packet. They gave me these machine screws, and even in their manual, they say that they should be not that screw, they should be a stinger style screw that just drills into sheet metal. That's fine, that's why I carry extra screws for when apparently you get things that aren't right. So. All right, so just to clarify, this is for this install. If you're doing drywall, you would flex all of these in. It would, you wouldn't have any bent in ones yet. You would slide it in through the hole that you just cut. This duct, you would, uh, there's a little flip up, which if you look at your instruction manual, you'll see, you'll flip it up and slide the duct out. You connect it, slide it over here, Take the fan, slide it in, slide it over here. And then what you do is after you have your duct all taped up and ready to go, you would slide your fan over, click it on, make sure it's nice and locked back in. And then you would bend your tabs up inside the ceiling. So you'd kind of hold it up in the ceiling if you can by this. And then you would bend, 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 do all your bends drop it down so it slides back into the hole, grab these on the other side of the drywall and bend up and that would seal your drywall. And that would hug it to the drywall. Don't need that anyway. For this install, you would do this, mount it to the stud, do this brace. If you want it more centered, you would use that metal bracket that fell on the floor and you could trim it to size depending how far you want it to sit out from the stud. 
And then the next thing that I would suggest is after your drywaller is done, grab these tabs and flip them all up and it's going to sandwich the drywall. It's going to sandwich it against the drywall so you don't get vibration because that will drive anyone nuts. Not just myself, I hope. So, let's see if this screw I found is going to work. That'll work. Again, these are just some half inch screws that I knew were a little bit thicker than the sheet metal. There. That's all it needs to do. Holds it nice and sturdy. Wow. Nice and rock solid. Next thing, let's take this metal plate off right here so we can do the electrical. So, as you can see, you have three wires here, and we have a ground right here to the box. So if you have your Romex like so, right down the center of the wire, that's where your ground is, that's where you want to make your cut, because there's no jacket on the ground. See. There we go. Let's make some sense of these wires for you in a second. So first thing we have is a hot wire or white wire, which is our neutral. White wire, which is right here, goes to white wire right here. By the way, just so you know, this circuit hasn't been activated yet. So, the reason why I'm mentioning this, if you're doing this at home, and you have an activated circuit, you would want to pull turn off the breaker, or at the very least, make sure your light switch is turned off. You see we have two grounds here, one to the box, one to the connector. We put it like this, and then we would bring it up here like this. Put your morette, make sure you get all three tips. Once you get a good tip, you should feel all three of them twist. And I like to, some people like three twists, seven twists, whatever you want. Just make sure you pull on your wires and make sure none of them are coming out. Last one, but not least. This one. Again, make the tips line up. Start screwing it, you'll feel it grip and then turn it and make sure you get it a good couple times at least there we go now we will tuck this stuff back up in here Watch out for the sheet metal, it can. I'm pretty sharp. Darn ground wire. All right, get that up in there. Oh, 
Oh, I see. There's missing a sheet metal teeth that are up at the top. Yeah, just like I thought. The wires are caught again. All right, there we go. Make sure you're not pinching your wires. Because if you pinch them and then you go and you tighten it, it'll ground the wire, short it, and then you'll pop your breaker. So, just like that. That's all said and done. Now the last piece. So on here, grab this. You need to do this so the flap opens. That flap doesn't open. <laughs> Don't turn the fan on. Okay. This pipe is gonna go on right here. Next thing you're gonna wanna do, me, I've just got, there we go. Make sure that adhesive's pulled off. You want this to move freely. So that way when the wind blows, it blocks it. Because if there's a windstorm outside and you don't do that, all of a sudden you're gonna notice it for sure. So now you can see, this comes all the way around here. And our next goal is to just take our tape, aluminum foil tape, ducting tape, and tape it up so that this is never going to come off unless you want it to. There we go. You want to make it easy on yourself, do that. Now, you can tape a little easier. Again, that's just with those release hooks. All I did is I put my nail in between it and pulled it and then lifted up. That's all there is to it. make sure it's not only holding but it's sealing against that plastic edge you don't you want it to be close but you don't want it right up against it otherwise you'll have nothing to grip to and two then you won't know for a hundred percent if it's sealed for air Do a pull test. Now make sure that entire edge is sealed. Seal around all your duct. Perfect. 
Line it back up. There. That's all there is to that. You want to, you pull this back over. This doesn't matter. This is just uh, for in attics and stuff. Wicks away the moisture, keeps it insulated. Kind of like a dual layer. But that's it. The bathroom fan's installed. If you have the drywall portion, now you just click your cover on. Which would clip right into here. You'll see that it's got the bend, lock, lock, squish against the ceiling, done. Other than that, I might turn this on real quick, make sure we're working. Turns off. Turns on. Again, this is great for if you have kids or anyone where you're worried about them not turning on the bathroom fan when you're having a shower, especially when you don't have a window because you want to make sure that moisture is getting wicked out of here. But yeah, that's all there is to it. It's all good. Again, like I said, if you had a light like this one over here, you could come off of that power if you uh, don't have one previously wired in. And again, all you would do is run a piece of Romex from there and then connect it to the light using those exact same colors. Just make sure you hit your ground, your black, and your white, and you're fine. It's super easy. And it's also way easier if you have an attic to get into. If not, running that wire, if you don't have a drop ceiling, can be a little fun. I would suggest if you don't have a drop ceiling, going to the next stud cavity over, cutting in your fan. Well, so your light's over here, your fan's right here. Then if you want to, you can look from this side and you could drill through or you just put it right beside the light that's in the bathroom. It's not the best aesthetically, but it's just how it goes. But again, if you end up doing the light way, all you have to do is take out the light look in the box and uh, you can try and pop it out through the side of the box. If the box is mounted to a stud, you just drill through the box and through the stud and then shoot a piece of Romex over into your fan. Anyways, I hope that helped you out with installing your bathroom fan today. This fan is extremely quiet. I must say, very, very happy with it. Thanks again for watching. Press like if it helped you out. Subscribe for more.